Over the weekend, these pictures of members of the Islamic State in West Africa province sharing money and foodstuff to some residents of Northeast Nigeria were widely shared on social media. In more pictures, the group organized a Ramadan preaching session with hundreds of children and adults in attendance. The pictures point to one thing. The terror groups control territories within Nigeria. An independent researcher and conflict reporter, Ali Dahiru, joins us from Abuja to discuss this. Good morning, Mr. Dahiru. Good yes, morning. good morning. Thanks for being here. So you are one of the few people who first posted those pictures online. Um, what can you tell us about the pictures? As in, where did you get them from? And regarding the content, because lots of people say, could this have been in Nigeria or not? And what exactly is happening in those pictures? So how do you interpret this for us? Uh, well, uh, this is not the first time that uh, these terrorists uh, uh, spread propaganda pictures or yes. videos on social media, uh, especially those encrypted social media spaces like Telegram and you know um, others like that. So um, this is not the first time they have been releasing these kind of videos and these pictures. And the uh, issue of that is, like I said, in West Africa province. Um, they release these pictures as part of the um, uh, other pictures they release in other countries in the Africa, in West Africa. Not only in West Africa, but the world over. I mean, from their parent body, um, uh, that is Islamic State from, in Iraq and uh, uh, Syria. Uh, so the pictures are part of those released by the IS uh, world over. We know what the pictures look like, you know, um, this is swap fighters distributing money and food, you know, to these people. Lots of people say maybe they're trying to convert them, you know, recruit them into their fold. But what's the fact? Uh, well, um, you know, when they capture territories, they forcefully combat people. Even if you say you are not actually going to join the, uh, the group, they will forcefully combat you. They will force you um, into the group. So... Uh, even without spreading the money, I think they would. They were initiating these people into their group. But uh, spreading the money is an actually a propaganda methodology that they are using to show. Yes, even if you join us, we are going to give you something. It's not like uh, we are going to uh, leave you alone. It's not like we are going to give you with financial distress and depression. Um, we are actually going to support you. It's the same thing that they did uh, when they captured Gaidam in Yobi State. Uh, they followed all the houses in Bedem and they started giving them like uh, 20k per household. So right. it's actually a propaganda mission that they are using to, uh, you know, attract the attention of the others who didn't join. Uh, to tell them that even if you join, it's not actually going to end in futile. We are going to support you. We are going to give you money. We are going to give you food. We are going to give you uh, whatever you require that Nigerian state or other African states are not going to give you. All right, so, so what does this um, uh, say about uh, the idea of them controlling territory and uh, territories in northern Nigeria? Does this give, um, you know, does that make that true? And of course, uh, what does it also say about Nigeria's security agencies and their level or the ability to wipe these per, uh, persons out of Nigeria's uh, uh, space? Well, uh, I think so many people commenting on social media misunderstand this thing. Uh, Boko Haram uh, captured some distant territory. It's not like they, uh, in 2014 uh, when they captured uh, about 20 local governments. I mean, the local governments that are in the town. Nowadays, Boko Haram uh, attacks were mostly in the villages or remote areas of Nigeria. But they are still controlling some places. So it's not like uh, they were totally abolished from controlling any territory. Uh, they're actually controlling some villages. Uh, and the, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, if they come and attack a particular location, uh, they stay there for a while before the army would now come and liberate the place. So it's not like uh, what people are thinking that the government has abandoned the, 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 the spaces or the, the villages that abandoned the communities and these people are controlling the, the things. And another thing is that 
there are many innocent people out there in those communities they are controlling. So if we are to see like an air an airstrike uh, operation would be done, then a lot of innocent people will be killed. So there are lots of ways that uh, uh, these particular places would be a kind of um, um, uh, liberated or kind of safe from the hands of these people without harming the innocent people out there. So most of the time when uh, the government talk about uh, 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 accepting repentant Boko Haram terrorists, the government is not actually talking about the fighters. They're talking about those people that join the Boko Haram forcefully. Okay. So a lot of people misunderstand. It's not all about uh, that uh, Chico has now become repentant and now we have accepting him, we are accepting him for uh, any other big commander uh, has, has accepted peace and uh, drops his arm. The, therefore, the government is integrating him into the society. It's not like that. Okay. Most of those that are integrated into the community or back into the society, most of them were forcibly uh, pushed into the a terror organization without unwillingly, I mean. So okay. it's not like that. So many people don't understand these things. Uh, they, are, they just keep writing on social media without understanding what's going on in the field. All right. Uh, Mr. Dahiru, you mentioned earlier that these ISWAP fighters could go from house to house after, you know, capturing a territory and then they begin to give them money as much as 20,000 naira, like you've said, for each household. And in the pictures we saw, these, you know, terrorists were distributed 500 naira notes to young kids. In your research as, you know, a conflict writer, were you able to in any way trace the source of these funds? Or would you say these are from their financiers, these are from, you know, ransom payments? Well, uh, Boko Haram uh, actually have many sources of income. Uh, sometimes when they raid a particular location, they confiscate money from the residents. That is another one. And another thing is that uh, they engage into some small, uh, like fishing. Uh, uh, they get taxes from the people, the, look, the, look, the, 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 the resident of the particular place they captured. Uh, that is another thing. And then, and sometimes they engage into kidnapping for ransom. So, so they get a lot of money. You know, getting financiers or funders outside the, their zone is really difficult nowadays, especially uh, with the new banking uh, system that we have, with the BVN and all those stops. And the Nigerian government is striking all the activities of uh, uh, people uh, transacting with any other person, especially those kind of terrorists. Uh, so it's really difficult uh, to be, you know, engaging in transactions, online transactions with these people. But these are the major sources of their income. Uh, they, they get taxes from the residents of the, uh, of the particular location they captured. That is number one. And they confiscate money from their, the, resources, the people in the resident, especially those who they tax unbelievers. That is, you know, those who are not uh, following the same particular ideology that they are following. They confiscate their properties and money because they think that is uh, permissible according to their mm. own so, interpretation so Dahi so of Mr. Sharia law. Mr. Dahiru, so basically it's, it's true what we hear, that some communities actually come together, you know, to contribute money to pay to these terrorists as taxes and levies so they can be protected. Uh, it's not so that they, they can be protected. It's that they fear that may be, they may be killed if they do not pay that. It's just like kidnapping for ransom. If you do not pay... The terrorist will kill your, uh, you know, your, 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 I mean, your brother or your husband or your close one. So you have to pay if you need to, if you need your, you know, close one to be released. That is the same thing. No, I'm not talking about the ransom. I mean the taxes, the taxes you mentioned. Not, yeah, not yeah, the ransom. that is where, that's where I'm coming. Um, so when they capture a particular location, the resident, if they need their life to be, you know, supplied, Therefore, they have to pay this kind of taxes when they impose them on them. Oh, until right. when the army will now come and liberate, liberate that particular location. That is it. Well, um, you know, I, I also want you to speak on, you know, what, you know, like a, an eye on the ground is like for those uh, locations. Um, for those that the army has not liberated, um, then of course, you, from what you're describing, once an army, the army liberates a place, uh, do they still come back to those locations or, you know, that's it for them in that location? Uh, and what is it like on ground with these people? Do you see them walking around? 
Are they part of the community? Is there places where people know that they stay and they leave? Um, share with us, you know, paint a picture of what it is like on ground. I, I, I didn't understand. Do you mean like what's it uh, on the ground when they capture a particular location? No, yeah, when, when these what ISO is life fighters, like, you know, right? exactly. What, what is, is it like? Do they live among these people? Um, are they walking around, you know, with yeah. their weapons? Yes, uh, that's what they do, actually. Uh, they live with them. They try to cycle that particular location, especially, you know, villages, uh, uh, they have small population. So they could, they could control them, uh, even without, uh, uh, you know, sophisticated uh, arms or millions of, uh, or thousands of fighters. Uh, they actually live with them and they try to impose their own interpretation of violence Sharia law in that particular location. They live with them until uh, maybe at the, sometimes when the army would come and break that particular location. And the thing is that most of what is happening is that the army, uh, the, the army have, have limited number of fighters to remain at that particular location after they liberate it. So when they liberate that particular location and all those properties in that location, uh, um, you know, actually are destroyed, uh, then they move to another location to liberate them. So while moving there, unfortunately, these terrorists, at, at some time, they come back to that particular location. That is a major problem that uh, uh, the Nigerian government, I think, or the Nigerian forces are facing in the North East, especially in the Lake mm -hmm. And another thing, let me tell you the thing is that these stories uh, have their own propaganda. The propaganda is not only in videos or in only in pictures. Sometimes uh, they try to implement what the government could not implement in remote villages. I mean, like, they try to bring basic amenities in their education. They try to bring, you know, sometimes um, uh, if there is, you know, default um, a, uh, a, a, I mean, power system, I mean, that the electric system, electric system that, at that particular location, they try to see that they require a so that the people start enjoying it. Oh, you see, these people are even more masterful than the Nigerian government. But the terror comes later, especially when you uh, when the people start to do something that is against what the terrorists are trying to implement there. Then that any mistake then you'd be killed. That's okay. That is what's actually... So, so Mr. Darahiru, do we have an idea of, you know, just how much states, communities, or territories that these ISWAP or Boko Haram fighters control in northern Nigeria? I, I don't... I can't actually say uh, the, these are the numbers because I don't know, actually. Sometimes I know what I see, I know what I can get from other publics or what other conflict reporters or what I can get from the field. So that is it. But I cannot see these are the... But can, how can widespread you, you a, is it? Yeah, can you give an estimate of, you know, what their numbers are like? Um, I'm not conversant with the all the location in that part. So, so in villages, I don't even know their names until they capture them. Then oh. I will come to know their names. So I can't really estimate. But... Oh. Uh, uh, recently, they captured Gaidem, and they, they are they captured most or oh, many territories in the Lektar region. And the Lektar region is not only Nigeria. There are parts of Cameroon. Uh, there, there, there is uh, a part in Niger. There is Chad, and so many parts. Okay. Countries I, was, I was hoping that we can get uh, you know if they if they're in their hundreds or in their they're in their thousands um, um, across those regions. Yeah, yeah, do you mean in terms of fighters? Yeah, you know, are they in their thousands or you know just a couple of hundreds of them? Um, I can't really say, but I, I believe there are thousands there because they for, they, they, they force people to join them. That's yeah. their recruitment as well. All right. They are forcing people. So you can to know that these are the particular, uh, those are the exact numbers that we have out there. But... You know what? I actually know what I'm saying about that. When they capture a particular location, all males there, especially those who they see, they have like they put up a military capability. They force them to join their fighters. All right, right. Aliu, Aliu Dahiu, Dahir. thank you very much for your time this yes, morning. Remember to continue to stay safe. We'd we'll love to continue to speak with you every now and then. Thank you very much.
All right. So we're still talking security, the state of the nation. After the break, we have the Director of Publicity and Advocacy of the Northern Elders Forum um, after the break. Do stay with us.